<laughs> well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, excited to be at game week. Um, had our first practice yesterday. Uh, just in uh, spiders, we'll go full pads today, get into a normal week. Uh, a lot of the game plan was put in last week, but uh, still some fine tuning, still a lot of uh, mistakes that uh, we were making, especially with some of our uh, newer players, younger guys that we need to get caught up to speed. And um, bottom line is we need to play. We need to play somebody else and uh, quit banging around with each other. And, and uh, our plan is to play an awful lot of guys, especially on special teams, because we have you know 39 new guys on our roster and we need to get them acclimated to playing college football at K-State. So it'll be an exciting week for us. Coach, you mentioned last time we were together that you've made some adjustments with the training and how you guys are managing the bodies of your players. Do you come out of camp as healthy as you've been in a while or does it sneak up on you? Yeah, we really did. Uh, talk to the captains yesterday and some of the leaders. Their bodies feel really good. Uh, I think getting them out a little earlier at night uh, throughout the month of August, uh, gave them another hour of sleep probably, probably helped them with recovery. And uh, we talked extensively about hydration and nutrition and uh, we feel we feel good. We're, the only one we're down right now is Will Honus. Uh, Will won't play um, uh, on Saturday, but uh, everybody else that came into camp would be ready to play. Is that the same injury he arrived with or is it something new? No, something that uh, has been aggravating him and uh, um, we're gonna, you know, Kind of be cautious with him, and uh, he's not. He'll be back. It's just a matter. We're just not going to play him this week. Speaking of transfers, you've had a great deal of success with that, and judging from the depth chart, particularly at safety, you looks like you struck a gold mine. Well, we'll uh, get him into game action, and we're going to play a lot of guys. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, Josh Hayes is one that jumps out at me. That was here in spring ball, uh, came in as a corner, and uh, very familiar with Josh and. Um, with some of the things we're doing differently in, in, in the secondary. Uh, he fit in right at free safety, um, allows him to have a skill set that uh, he's really good in man coverage. Um, he's learned how to play zone coverage from the safety spot because everything's been a corner for him. But uh, he's had a really good spring, really good summer, uh, fall camp. Excited for him. Uh, Drake Cheatham's had a really good uh, summer and fall camp. Kobe. Savage has had a really good summer and fall camp. And then you have Sincere Mason, TJ Smith. Um, we, we have a, more depth there, more bodies. We're going to play a lot of guys in the secondary. And finally, Adrian Martinez, now that you've had a good look at him, how is he different than maybe what you thought coming in? Uh, I don't know if, if I thought he was going to be any different than what he is. Um, you know, you watch game tape. Uh, that's what we mainly had from Nebraska days. And then just, just watching – the way he's developed over the last uh, um, 30 days in particular since we started camp, uh, how much more confident he is. Um, he's in rhythm. He, he understands uh, where people are supposed to be. Uh, he's got a good rapport with the receivers and tight ends and backs. And so uh, I, he, same way with Adrian. I think he's just excited to play. To follow up to that, um, when you looked at the game tape of Adrian, did you see any commonality to – what was causing some of his mistakes when he was up north? Um, no, I didn't look at it in that respect. I looked at it more just a skill set and, and what we could do and what Coach Klein could do with him. Uh, probably emphasize more of the positives or what we thought he would be able to do, and, and we're excited to cut him loose and let him play. Looking at the offensive line, what's, what would you say is the game one plan for center? Do you want to use both those guys? Yeah, both will will play. Um, Gilly and, and Hadley. Han, Hadley will be a swing guy and play some guard as well. Uh, Gilly will strictly play center, but uh, uh, without question, we plan on playing both guys at center. When did you first start realizing that Austin Moore would be a guy who could start for you at linebacker? Uh, last year, uh, because he had so many reps. He was playing behind a, the old man of Fletch back there, and uh, so he had a ton of reps. Uh, with the twos and and we shelved Fletch a lot to save him for games and so uh, Austin just continued to to learn the system and learn how to play and uh, he's a guy that you could flip on the film of of last fall camp last year early on in special teams to how he uh, knows how to play block destruction angles knowing our defense you know he's a quiet kid but he's one of the best communicators out there on the football field and uh Austin uh a walk on in here that uh earned a scholarship and earned a starting starting position and we're excited for Austin
And when, when you have a number of true freshmen on the two deep like you do right now, do you find yourself trying to, um, you know, limit their games in case you want to redshirt them? Or at this point, are you thinking, let's just use them when we have Right to? now, if they're in the two deep, our plan is to play them. Now, maybe something will, will change that. But, um, you know, um, there's a handful of guys that uh, we've earmarked that uh, we're going to play. Um, and maybe even a few more, you, you know, you just you knock on wood that you don't lose some uh, older guys that are experienced guys, but we've done a really nice job of whether it's on special teams or on offense, defense, finding ways to get those guys repetition late in fall camp when you start to focus on game planning, um, trying to get some of those really young players or redshirt freshmen more reps against each other so that they feel more comfortable when, when they you have to throw them out there and the lights are on. Coach, when you look at South Dakota, a team who – arguably maybe should have beat Kansas last year to open the season. They're an FCS playoff team. They returned their starting quarterback. What are some challenges that they present to you? Uh, they're a veteran team. Uh, they're big up front, offensive line. Uh, I think four starters return. Really impressed with the quarterback. Quarterback uh, has played a lot of football for him, has made really good decisions, played a lot of games. Um, so you have an experienced offensive line returning quarterback, you, it's a good place to start from. Uh, I think they're active on defense, um, really good linebacker. Um, I think they're uh, a team that is well coached. I mean, anytime Bob Nielsen is coaching a football team, it's going to be a really disciplined, well coached football team. And um, they, they're going to be ready for the moment. They'll be excited about coming into the bill uh, and just teeing it up and playing. And I'm sure they're in the same boat as we are of. Um, just wanting to, to play somebody else. And uh, I, we're going to have to have our best uh, A game to come out on top. And with having multiple players and coaches who have spent time at the FCS level, do you feel like that kind of gives you guys an advantage of just not overlooking a team like South Dakota? Well, from a coaching standpoint, it does, uh, without question. Just because we're so familiar with South Dakota, we played them with Coach Nielsen for a few years. Uh, and so I, I know how... The talent, uh, you know, you look at a kid like Briley Moore that came in here and made an immediate impact. There's really good players at the FCS level. Everybody knows that. And um, it's, uh, you know, now it's about us. We, we need to focus on what Kansas State does. You know, each opponent's going to create some problems for us, but we need to make sure that we don't have some mental errors and make sure that we're playing fast and playing physical and, and focus more on, on what we're doing. What do you want to, there's probably a number of things, but what do you want to learn the most um, coming out of Saturday about your team? Uh, all the new guys that we have, uh, just getting game experience for starters, whether whether they are a starter or a backup, playing a lot of special teams, because we have a lot of guys on the two deep uh, of special teams that may not be in the two deep on offense and defense, because it kind of leads us into we have three weeks to learn an awful lot before we have to start trimming a, a travel roster. That's the first thing. Second thing is just um, playing our systems offensively and defensively, uh, fast, physical, um, great communication, great mental focus, lack of mental errors. You always worry in that first game, uh, you know, whether it's uh, play clock, whether it's substitution errors, whether it's false starts, uh, whether it's defensively not being able to get a guy on and off the field because these guys are going to tempo, uh, and it's you know we practice that, but not in a game situation. Um, tackling, uh, all the things that early on you're you're hopeful that um, the things that you did have prepared the guys, but uh, um, just the game repetition is going to be the thing that's going to be so critical and key for us. Two new assistants on, on the offensive end, and Collins now the offensive coordinator. Do you have to practice that in-game communication all over again a little bit? Yeah, we did that on uh, last Friday night. We had a mock game and, and had everybody in their spots, uh, and I think that helped. Um, I think it helped all those new players. You know, We did everything from what a pregame warm-up would be to where they're at on the sideline to – you know, a pregame at the hotel, just trying to get all the bugs ironed out, trying to get all the anxiety away from the guys to say this is what we do on a Friday and a Saturday. And uh, I, I think it was productive because I talked to some guys, they were just appreciative of, of knowing, okay, this is how it operates. And so now it's just going to be different because there's going to be 50,000 in there and not uh, uh, just us coaches and uh, some support staff. So uh, I know the guys are really excited about uh, finally getting a chance to play. What attributes does uh, Drake Cheatham bring to that jack safety role? 
Very smart, played a lot of football, uh, had a lot of really good success at his previous institution, uh, has a lot of confidence, uh, really good communicator. Um, it's, it's kind of a new position for him uh, in the fact that they didn't run that same defense uh, at his old place. But uh, I, I, just a really mature guy that uh, understands the game of football uh, really well. And so I'm excited. He's going to split time with Sincere. Both of them are going to play. Um, because we need to continue to develop uh, Sincere, and Sincere missed a good chunk of, of last season. So I'm excited about uh, the two guys that are playing that jack spot. And the health of Khalid Duke right now, what, uh, where's he at versus where he could be by midseason? Um, he's in good position right now. He's going to play uh, on Saturday. That's I, I don't know if he'll play 15 plays or 55 plays. Um, but um, he's pract he practiced all last week, practiced all, all this week. He's played enough football that now we just got to get him into some game shape. Um, but uh, he knows what he's doing. And, and uh, we just get, sometimes you just get players like that, you just got to cut them loose and let them play. And um, without question that Khalid is excited about the opportunity to, to get back on the field. You know, he had his season cut short by about 10 games last year, and that's hard. And so... Uh, I, I know, like a number of guys, he's just excited to get back out, be healthy, and play fast. And another linebacker, Gavin Forche, how's he picked things up this uh, fall and summer? He's doing well. We started him off at, uh, at an outside linebacker of our Sam backer spot, and then uh, when, uh, when Will Honus lost him a little bit during fall camp, we moved him to Will linebacker, so he's starting to um, get more comfortable there. Gavin's going to be a really good football player. Um, just learning the nuances of the defense. Uh, very fast kid, um, physical. Uh, now just trying to get him some reps. How did DJ Giddens prove himself to be the number two over Anthony Frias? Um, well, they're both going to play. DJ and Anthony are both going to play. Uh, but uh, just uh, quality, body of work. You know, DJ was here all spring, um, took most of the reps. Was We didn't give... Uh, do set many reps in the spring, and then in the fall, uh, once again, we tried to push uh, DJ and put him with the ones an awful lot, put Anthony with the ones uh, as well. But uh, uh, DJ just over a long body of work um, continued to improve. Uh, and we all know DJ's a really good runner of the football, but just uh, pass routes, pass protection, uh, understanding – uh, how important the play action is and the fakes he has. And uh, I'm excited because um, DJ's ready to play college football. Uh, and I think people think they are as true freshmen. Now you get that year under your belt. Uh, I'm excited for DJ. He's going to be a really, uh, really big asset, asset for us this year. Uh, wonder about uh, Sean Robinson. Um, I know you were with Khalid out. You maybe had a little bit of a gap at that position. How has he done? And how important was that for him to be able to make that switch? Yeah, he uh, we switched him to that position middle of spring. So he had a – Sean understands football for starters. He really gets the game of football. And we wanted him closer to the line of scrimmage. We started him at safety, moved him to backer in the middle of spring. So then he took almost all the reps um, with the ones or twos throughout uh, fall camp, um, understands what we're doing. Um, Des Purnell also has taken some reps there. We're going to play some guys at that Sam Backer spot, but I'm, I'm really pleased with, with Sean's progress. I'm pleased with how explosive of a player he is. Um, he, he, another guy that just understands the game. Um, he's a good blitzer. He's good in coverage. Uh, he's a very physical guy. He doesn't, he doesn't stay blocked. He's really good at block destruction. So um, gives us another really good athlete at that Sam Backer spot. Colin's going to go in the Ring of Honor this week. Just want to maybe get some of your thoughts on Yeah, pretty cool for, for CK and all those inductees. Uh, uh, shows you the impact he had as a, as a player here on and off the, off the field. But uh, I'm excited because um, it, when I think of Colin, I think of a very humble guy that appreciates um, the opportunities that he had. Uh, made the most of the opportunities, terrific football player, but just the humility and uh, how he's done a tremendous job of uh, with our players uh, of talking about being grateful, talking about uh, taking advantage of the opportunity uh, when you're given that. And uh, so it'll be a pretty special weekend for the Klein family. And you see the former quarterback in him as a absolutely, as Absolutely, we do. And uh, um, it's been fun to watch him over the last – 
month uh, for sure at practice every day whether it's teaching and coaching the quarterbacks to uh, talking to the wide receivers and the offensive line to um, in a staff room. He's just, uh, he's, I think, very comfortable. And uh, now we just need to get the season started for, for Colin as well. It's going to be a busy weekend for him. What, is, what has Christian Moore done to kind of get even with Jackson Ian at, at that fullback spot? Uh, a couple things. Jack's missed uh, quite a bit of fall camp, um, but he's back now. So that allowed Christian – to get more and more snaps, which I thought was really important for him because Jax knows our offense and, and had taken the lion's share of the reps in spring and early fall camp. Then we lost Jax for a little bit, so then that elevated Christian to the first spot. And uh, um, very physical guy, um, stays on his tracks really well from that fullback spot and, and, and uh, understands um, kicking people out and logging people inside. and. Um, Jack's getting nicked up probably helped us because it it allowed Coach LePac to push Christian along, and now we really feel like we have two guys that we can count on. Um, Jax is, is back healthy now, so um, we'll see how that plays out. Chris, the, the importance of becoming a little bit less of a penalized team, how – where does that fit in this year? Uh, well, you always want to be uh, you work on discipline. We talk about it all the time, and and uh, have officials at practice. And sometimes it's going to be it's going to be called a certain way. You know, it's you're going to have holding penalties. You're going to have a couple of PIs here and there. It's eliminating uh, the focus, mental air, pre-snap penalties. That's the thing that. Um, um, it, it has cost us a few times in practices when we're doing a competition offense versus defense, whether it's a hard count and we're jumping on defense to um, you know, miss, miss timing on a snap count with somebody offensively. Um, it, but it's an emphasis that we're put, putting on every day uh, to try to eliminate those mental layers. Uh, some physical layers you're going to have um, just in the nature of how the game's being called right now. But we have to eliminate the pre-snap penalties. Colin, for just a second, is with all of your experience in football, can you describe the art of being a good to great play caller? Uh, since I've never done it on the offensive side, it's about rhythm. I know uh, and trying to keep uh, defenses off their, you know, on their heels and and off balance. Um, same thing as a defensive play caller. I think Colin, it's it's getting to know your personnel, and that was I think on display. Uh, last year in the bowl game of how well he knew Sky and how well he knew what we had on offense. And I think part of that is just continuing to learn about Adrian, continuing to learn um, how Adrian works with our wide receivers and tight ends. But there's there's been a great comfort level thus far with how we're calling it. And, and we, we do so many good-on-good good situations in fall camp where it's not scripted. And I think our both of our coordinators really like that to just say, hey, it's first and ten. It's on the plus 20 today or it's on the minus uh, 40 today or wherever it's at. It's a red zone, and I'm just going to say, let's go. It's it's call it from the sideline. And I think um, all coordinators like that because it, it you know the, the players aren't saying, well, I know this play's coming next. It's um, um, a little bit more uh, preemptive to those guys just uh, calling it off the cuff, and, and uh, he's become, I think, uh, really comfortable in that. I know we've had a couple of conversations, you and I, about special teams guys and trying to incorporate some younger guys in there. I'm just curious as to how that has gone. I know you have Nick and I'm sure yep. Austin Moore and those types of guys, but replacing a Landry Weber, those types of guys, that's got to be pretty pretty difficult. It, How's that gone? It, it's gone well. I mean, we had uh, well over 200 snaps uh, from you know guys like Landry and Ross Elder. Um, We've put a huge emphasis, and it started last spring when we were down all those offense and defensive linemen, in particular defensive linemen, and, and did a bunch of special team stuff. Ty Bowman's really stepped up. Uh, he played some special teams for us last year, but he's really stepped up this year. Um, Seth Porter's a guy that we're going to lean on more and more. Um, his brother Shane Porter is going to play on some special teams for us uh, that I'm excited about. Uh, um, you know, we're going to play an awful lot of guys that are probably either in their first or second year in the program that uh, uh, have learned behind the Landry Webbers to understand how we do things. And I'm excited to see because we, we need to be 
the successful and winning on special teams week in and week out, the amount of time we put in on it. I'm excited for Chris Tennant, um, who I know has um, taken that next step as a kicker. Um, you know, we've, we've got the best long snapper in college football, in my opinion, in, in Randon, and makes it much easier on Chris, makes it much easier on, on Ty and Jack because the ball is going to be there. Um, but uh, you're going to see a lot of different people uh, on special teams uh, uh, this week that um, – uh, maybe not in the too deep, but uh, they're going to travel, and so they're going to find their way on on that bus. When uh, when you say you want to play a lot of people in this game, do you have a number in mind? Um, I don't. More because of special teams. Um, you know, for example, on offense line, we envision playing eight guys. That's just uh, an example, and then you know, a couple of tailbacks. But with all the People on special teams, based on the amount of kick returns, punts, punt returns, and that stuff, we have uh, a group of um, three deep that we want to move around and get to. We have some some really good starters on those um, that are going to play on those, but we want to make sure that if it's a second kickoff of it, we don't play Daniel Green, for an example, and get uh, Des Purnell on there, um, regardless of the score just because we want to make sure that we get some of these guys that uh, we're going to count on once we get into conference play. Everybody's the same way. You, you've got to build up to conference play, and you've got to get guys in regardless of, of outcomes and wins and losses. You have to find a way, especially when you're at home, to get a multitude of guys in the game so that uh, you can find out about those guys as, as opposed to waiting until late October. Where's, uh, where's your confidence level in um, Leviston at left tackle right now? Really good. And, uh, you know, he's taken more snaps because Andrew Leingang, who's his backup, missed about 10 days of practice in fall camp. Liney's back, full go, ready to go. But KT took all those snaps plus some. And um, uh, he's had a really good camp, really good camp. And it's really important to KT. Um, KT's a guy that came in here or got to know when I first came in here and the amount of growth, maturity, uh, his his ability as a football player is is improved so much since the first day we walked in here. KT has the ability to be an all-conference player, and um, I, I'm excited for him to get the opportunity. Now, we'll play Liney some too, and you know that's the key of those two guys' development so we can keep Coop inside. One more for you. I'm sure this doesn't surprise you, but Skylar Thompson made the Dolphins roster today. What do you think he did so well during training camp? Well, I think he completed a lot of passes, didn't he? He didn't throw a pick, and he had a great I, – I had a good communication with Sky on Sunday, so I knew he made the 53 um, on Sunday, uh, but he didn't make the 53. He earned to be on the 53, and – I think uh, I don't know that that business very well, but I think if if they'd have released him, he'd have been picked up pretty pretty quickly. And so, um, like we talked about, it's a great fit for him down in Miami. He's excited to be there and learn from some of the older guys. But uh, um, stage wasn't too big; had a chip on his shoulder and and played really good football. And he was prepared to play really good football. Coach, you know, every year is kind of different. This seems to be a team that has some momentum uh, we haven't played a game yet <laughs> with it during the off season oh, okay. it, it 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 just seemed seemed that yeah. way um what are you going to think about when you're coming out of that locker room in front of fifty thousand fans for the season opener a how how fortunate we are to have the fan base that we have um the fact that uh fifty thousand people are, are going to come watch these these players that have put their heart and soul into the off season the summer the fall um, to be in a position to, to play another game at home and in front of the greatest fans and, and great stadium and so excited for that part. And then the second thing is just um, how fortunate I am to be at Kansas State and how fortunate I am to – it's hard to believe that this is going to be year four already. I, I'm just – I'm blown away that this is – going to we are going to start our fourth year as a staff here uh, and how excited I am for the season but how proud I am of – uh, what we are building um, and uh, the quality of, of student athletes and the quality of kids that we have in this program. It seems like last week we were on catbackers. I know. And, <laughs> and, and we were hitting all the different uh, cities and, and towns, and there was a great deal of energy 
Uh, how about in, in Manhattan? Do you feel a sense of uh, kind of a buzz or energy around around town, even just when you're out and about? Well, you tell me, because I have not been out the entire month of August. I've gone from, from the facility back to my bed at home, but uh, sure seems to be a lot of energy around, and um, it's exciting because, uh, um, you know, to start off a fall, uh, I mean, everybody loves fall Saturdays, and, and fall Saturdays in Manhattan are really special um, with our fan base, and it's going to be – I'm excited for the guys that are new to our program for us to pull in on those buses and get out and walk into the bill um, on, on our catwalk that we have now. Uh, it's just it, – it just sends you know chills up my spine to think about and uh, to run out of that tunnel with these guys and say, hey, let's go. You, you know, no regrets, no excuses. Let's just go play. Thank you. Coach, with DJ Giddens uh, locked as the – second string at running back right now along with him deuce vaughn at first string neither of those players were recruited very strong at the power five level we haven't seen dj giddens play yet but we've seen what deuce vaughn can do what would you say it is about you and your staff of how you're able to find players like these as such important positions uh just getting to know guys getting to dig on guys continuing to find uh uh, those gems or, or diamonds that um, we know fit our system, we know fit our culture, we know fit our locker room. And uh, DJ is one of those guys that uh, um, his best football is right ahead of him. I'll take him. Um, <laughs> Coach, uh, Will Howard's an ongoing kind of Rubik's Cube trying to manage his eligibility. Yep. Is he someone that you would prefer not to play even though you want to play a lot of guys? Um if a helmet pops off, Jake Rubley's going in the game. Okay. There, there you go. If a helmet pops off, Rubes is coming in the game right now. See, you got something, Fitz. I like it. One more. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.